So let me start by saying welcome, welcome, welcome. I know I've only got two there, but I'm an effusive kind of person, so you get that extra welcome in there. And our first question is, why are we here? And that's a pretty profound question to ask on many, many levels. But for most of you that are here, I imagine the reason for that is because you're interested in children's picture books. And I certainly am, and I hope to shed some light on the wonders and beauty of creating children's picture books. Here's our agenda, and I'm going to start with a little about myself and the Picture Book Academy, so I can give you some credentials and establish my, you know, <laughs> that yes, I am an ex expert and I know what I'm talking about here, and talk a little about the school that I founded, the Picture Book Academy and share a little about my former and future published students and you can read the rest of this for yourselves. So here are some of the books that um, I've created and helped create. Um, as you can see I'm an award-winning best-selling picture book creator and I'm published as both an illustrator and a writer. I have a PhD in Education and Cultural Studies and I wrote a 370 page dissertation on children's picture books. Apart from being published as a picture book creator, I've also published many, many academic articles on children's picture books as well as being featured in various places that you can see on the Picture Book Academy website. I've worked for the past 20 years as an editor, art director, designer, educator, consultant, and now as the founder and director of the Picture Book Academy. When I taught in universities, I taught children's literature courses, I also taught how to make children's picture book courses, as well as art education courses. And I loved the teaching part, but I hated grading. And I hated this whole um, institutionalized setting where everybody had to be on the same page at the same time. And I wanted people to be able to learn from pleasure and to learn in ways that were authentic and that were appropriate for their own learning styles. And so I founded the Picture Book Academy. And what's brilliant about the Picture Book Academy is that I can have all these amazing custom videos that I've created with friends and people that I know or that I've met or that I've just been brave enough to contact that are children's picture book experts and I've formulated specific questions to ask them that connect with the different course content that I've created. So I'm able to teach way more effectively in a much more empowering way than I ever could in face-to-face -face classes. And the other thing is that I wanted that face-to-face -face component. And so I've totally incorporated that into the online courses as well. So that um, the, the ones that are interactive, we have one-on-one um, -on -one Skype critiques. So we get to see each other and I'll teach you how to do that. And we also have small critique groups and Facebook groups and all sorts of goodies. It's quite wonderful. So I think that's enough about the Picture Book Academy. I should have included the website there, but hopefully I include it later on. Here's some of my older picture book art. In fact, next year I'm going to be teaching an illustration course, The Craft and Business of Children's Book Illustration. I've taught children's book writing and children's book illustrating for over 20 years now. And I have an incredible history of published, best-selling, and award-winning students. And fortunately, the vast majority of my students still love me, and I still love them. I tend to get very close with my students. And some of them also show up in my courses, which is really fabulous. So here's, here's a peek at some of their work. Here's a look at a couple of testimonials as well as the graduation certificate that I give each student who completes the course. 
I created the course to be something that would have been really fantastic for me when I was first starting out, where I wanted to get a really foundational, lifelong knowledge and understanding how children's picture books work, as well as have a lot of fun doing it. So this is, you know, just head on over to the picturebookacademy.com FAQ section. So I wanted to also provide a little bit of um, helpful content in this webinar, aside from talking about me and the Picture Book Academy and how much I love teaching and all the goodies that my students get, by talking a little bit about picture book word lengths, because there's a, a bit of controversy about this. Um, in the past, it used to be that you could have 1,200, even 2,000 words in a children's picture book. But these days, because parents are really tired um, and because of, you know, the shortened attention span with multimedia, editors are looking for much shorter word lengths. And there, as always, there are exceptions. These three books, there's quite a few wordless books out there. And they usually have a very strong conceptual foundation. And they're very, you know, obviously they're image driven. And they're really great for kids learning to identify different things with a parent who reads it to them or shows it to them. And they point out things together. Now, one of the things about these three particular books is they're all, uh, they're all created by fairly well-known people which I think opens a lot of doors. And if you want to do a wordless book, you need to be an artist and you need to be totally innovative and do something that's just extraordinary, as each of these books is. Now, the current preferred word length is 600 or words less. Some say 500 or less. Uh, each of these um, meets that criterion. Oh, and actually, I want to go back here. Now, I just want to say there's a really fantastic Mark Twain line that goes, um, I'm sorry, if I'd had more time, this would have been shorter. No matter what length you've got, you can always get it down. And you can always get it down to something much more concise and clear and consistent and charming. Hard to believe, I know, but it's true. I've gotten 2,400-word picture book stories down to 600 words. Now, of course, they weren't my own stories because that would be way too hard and I wouldn't do it in the first place. But it absolutely can be done. Now, here are books that have way more than 500 words. And the reason that, you know, one, most of them are established people, once again, but they're done in really clever ways, so it doesn't look like more than 500 words. So here's an example of a book that has way more than 500 words, but you can see how, you know, cleverly they've incorporated the text. So it's not like huge blocks of text like you'd see in books from the, you know, 80s and early 90s and even some from later on in the 90s. And so what I'm saying is they're still publishing books that are over 600 words, but you've got to do it in a really clever way. Um, and there are exceptions to, to the six other exceptions to the 600 word picture books, and those are biographies and nonfiction. I wanted to talk a little about character-driven picture books. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about this, but this is another area about, of, you know, where there's some confusion as to what is a character-driven picture book. And so here are some fabulous examples of character-driven picture books. And what that means is when your story has very, very strong characters and strong motivation and the story is driven by the internal process of your characters. I'm not going to go very deeply into it, but I will say that we've got a character-driven picture book expert 
Marsha Diane Arnold, who is fabulous and exquisite, and she's going to be teaching a self-paced course exclusively on character-driven picture books. And I've been working with her on it, and it's really fantastic. So that'll be coming at some point in the future. Meanwhile, back to our little presentation here. And we're going to have a look at Voices in the Park next. And Voices in the Park is a fantastic book to learn about um, foundational structure, a way that you can create a fabulous narrative structure for your picture book, as well as creating character-driven picture books. So I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read the first page, pages, sorry. First voice. It was time to take Victoria, our pedigree Labrador, and Charles, our son, for a walk. Second voice. I needed to get out of the house, so me and Smudge took the dog to the park. Third voice. I was at home on my own again. It's so boring. Then my mother said that it was time for our walk. Fourth voice. Dad had been really fed up, so I was happy when he said we could take Albert to the park. So I want you to have a look at the different fonts that are also a way of signifying the different voices, the different tone of voice. So we're learning about character and voice right now, and we go into those, you know, especially voice, we go nice and deeply into that in the Craft and Business of Writing Children's Picture Books course. But how this story works, it's, it's like um, Akira Kurosawa, who's a famous Japanese filmmaker, he made a film called Roshimon, and it tells of an incident from the point of view of four very different points of view. And that's exactly what this story does. It's from a posh mom and her son. And look how timid he is from, you know, this, he's depressed and timid from the font. And look at the little girls, um, really sort of bold, kicky font. And that gives you a real sense of, of who this kid's going to be. This book is brilliant on so many levels. Um, it deals with gender, it deals with class, it gives you a peek into surrealism, there's all sorts of surrealist nods to Magritte, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful book. So I really recommend um, that you, you have a look. And actually, I have a teaching video on my blog, which is called... Um, video lessons or video reviews at the Picture Book Academy. So go check that out. Here are some ways that you can keep in touch with me. And while you're looking at that, I'm going to talk a little about the video reviews I do. And they're every Monday. They're called Mondays with Mira. And they're free. And I choose books that I think are really exemplary. And I do a film about them. And I read the book out. And then I point out different things that make it so special and underlying themes and what it deals with and all sorts of goodies, often how the artwork is done. So I think that's it. I want to provide a whole bunch of resources for you. And uh, when I get a chance, I'll put these on the Picture Book Academy site. So I hope you enjoyed this and you got some value out of it. I'd love to have you as one of my successful students. I truly would. There's still a handful of spots left for the class that starts on Monday. And if you want to sign up with this $40 off special, here's the link. So that's it for now. Thank you and bye.